Okay, today I'm going to explain Dijkstra's algorithm. This algorithm helps us find the shortest path between nodes in a weighted graph. A weighted graph is just a fancy term that CS kids use to describe connected circles. Uh, that's basically it. So for the nerds out there, the circles are called nodes or vertices, while the lines that connect them are called edges. We can imagine the graph to be a city. The circles are the buildings or houses and the lines are the roads that connect them. As a Singaporean, I have to use our MRT map to explain this algo because it is just the perfect example. Say we start at this MRT station, Lorong Chuan, and I want to go to Dhobi Ghat. Which path should we take? The red line or the purple line? So here, let me simplify this map even further. Looking at this simplified map, one can tell that the purple line is faster. But how does a computer know? So let's use Dijkstra's algorithm to find the shortest path. Each node represents one station and the edges tell us how long the journey from one station to the other is. So from Long Chuan to Bishan is 3 minutes and so on. We then create this table that helps us keep track of the time it takes to travel from our starting node to every other node. Now we are ready to begin. From our start node, we explore the time taken to go to our neighbors. We set the time at Long Chuan to be zero since that is our starter node. From there, we check Serangoon and Bishan. Serangoon takes two minutes and Bishan takes three minutes. We have to compare the time in our table and the time we got from Serangoon and add the smallest value into the table. Since the value in the table is infinity, we can simply replace the value with the timings we get. This comparison may seem obvious now, but when we handle more complicated graphs, this step will help us decide which path to take. We also note down the previous node as our starter node, because by keeping track of the previous node, we are able to trace back our steps to our starter node from any other node. Now we take the two stations and add them to the queue. Okay, this queue is how we decide our next starter node. After creating a queue, we mark Long Chuan as visited. We check the queue when we want to decide on our next starter node. The queue is special as it is a priority queue, also known as a heap queue. The priority queue sorts its elements into a binary tree, but that is out of the scope of this Dijkstra's algorithm video. Basically, the queue just gives us the node that has the shortest time in the queue. By checking the queue, we see that Serangoon takes the shortest time, and now we make Serangoon our starter node. After making Serangoon our starter node, we are basically done with one iteration of Dijkstra's algorithm. We proceed to explore the neighbors of Serangoon, which is only Little India. We compare the time it takes to travel to Little India from Long Chuan plus Serangoon, with the time we have in the table, which is infinity. Do note that we have to add the time from Long Chuan to Serangoon because we are trying to find the shortest path to all nodes from Long Chuan. Since 12 minutes is smaller than infinity, we replace the value and add Serangoon to our previous node column. Now Little India is added to the queue with a time of 12 minutes. From the queue, the next smallest value is Bishan with a timing of 3 minutes. Therefore, we make Bishan our starter node. We apply the same steps from before. First, we explore the neighboring nodes. We see that traveling from Bishan to Newton requires 8 minutes. We then add the time required to travel from Long Chuan to Bishan and from Bishan to Newton. After getting 11 minutes, we add that timing to the table with Bishan being the previous node. Now we add Newton to the queue. From the queue, we get the node with the smallest timing, which in this case is Newton with 11 minutes. Since traveling to Newton is faster than traveling to Little India, we will make Newton our starter node. Newton has two neighbors, Little India and Dobi God. We add the time it takes to travel from Newton to Little India, giving us 14 minutes. 
Now we compare the 14 minutes with the timing we have in our table. Since we have a faster timing for Little India in our table, we do not replace the value and we do not add Little India to the queue. From here we move on to Dobigod. The travelling time to Dobigod is 16 minutes from Newton which is faster than Infinity, so we update our table and add Dobigod to the queue. Based off the queue, we will make Little India the starter node. Now we will explore its neighbours being Newton and Dobigod. To travel to Newton from Little India via Serangoon will take us 15 minutes. But as recorded in our table, the faster way is actually via Bishan. So we'll move on to Dobigod. To get to Dobigod via Serangoon and Little India will take us 14 minutes, which is faster than the time written in our table. So we will update the table and add Dobigod to the queue. Lastly, we make Dobigod the starter node and find that it has no unvisited neighbors. So we can pop Dobigod off from our queue and since the queue is empty, the algorithm ends. Now that the theory is done, the best way to test your understanding is to implement the algorithm. However, if you're like me, you'll probably stop the video right here and tell yourself that you fully understand this algorithm, which is what I did after browsing the wiki. So, I implemented the algorithm for you, in lead code, at the expense of my sanity because it took 10 hours to solve this question. Okay, so this is the implementation of Dijkstra's algorithm on the lead code question, network delay time. So you are given a network of n nodes, basically what we discussed, labeled from 1 to n. You are also given time, so this is the list that we have to process. It will be an array of an array. So an array containing arrays, but well, in this case it's tuples because they use the, the brackets like that. Yeah. So U will be our source node, V is our target node, and W is the time it takes to travel from U to V. Basically, U is 2, target node is 1, time travel is 1 minute or something. Yeah, whatever, you don't care what the unit is. So we'll send the signal from the given node k, so k is our starter node. So if k is 2, then we start from here. If k is 3, then we start from here. Return the minimum time it takes for all nodes to receive a signal. So return the time it takes to travel to all nodes. Yeah, and it has to be the fastest time. So the data will be like this. Times will be like this array of an array so 2 is the start node 1 is our target node and this is the time it takes to travel from 2 to 1 here also 2 to 3 requires 1 minute 3 to 4 requires 1 minute n is the number of nodes so which is 4 1 2 3 and 4 nodes so it's correct and we return output of negative 1 if we cannot visit all nodes so here is the code. You'll see that this code is basically a one-to-one -one translation of what we discussed in the theory. And the implementation took me like 10 hours, so... <laughs> Implementing is always harder than the theory. But it's fine. Anyways, the table. We initialize the table. So node, time, and previous node. Like what we discussed in the theory. Right? And now we make the time for every node start with infinity and the previous node we also make it start at zero so our table is set now we make our table start point to be k so basically we start from 2 and we make the time 0 and the previous node 0 like what we discussed in theory all the same okay now i made this dictionary called neighbors. This will help me get the data I need faster. If the data set gets bigger, we, this one will help as well. So 2 has 2 neighbors, 1 and 3, takes 1 minute to travel from 2 to 1 and 2 to 3, takes 1 minute. Okay, 3 has 1 neighbor which is 4, takes 1 minute, so correct, like that. Okay, make it a dictionary so it's easier to access. Call neighbors and then tell it we want 2, then we get this. Okay, we have a visited set. 
A set is an array that only allows unique elements inside, so you cannot have an array of like two elements that start with no two elements that are A or two elements that are one. So it can only be like one, two, three. Okay. Now we have our priority queue, which is time and node. So yeah, we check the time. If it's the lowest, then it'll be at the start. And now we're ready. We're basically done with the setup. You just have to go through the algo. So while we have a priority queue, we pop the time and the start node from the queue. If the time of the node we pop is more than the time we have in our table, the time we recorded in our table, we just continue because the table time is shorter. Now, if it's not, we explore all neighbors of the node that we just popped. So neighbors of start node, we'll get neighbor and neighbor time. So we'll get the neighbor and the time it takes to travel to that neighbor. And if the time we record in our table of the neighbor is more than the time it takes to travel from this node to the neighbor, then we have to update our table because the table time is, is longer and we don't want that. So we update the table, say table, neighbor, and here's a new time. So we add the time here and we record the previous node. So we record a previous node as this node that we just popped off the queue. And after that, we push the neighbor into the queue with this updated timing over here and the node. Yeah, and that's it. After that, we add the node to the visited list and we do some checks. We return negative one if we still have float infinity inside our table. So if any of the nodes have the time of infinity, we tell them that nah, this, this is invalid. So we return negative one. Else, we just find the minimum time it takes to travel to all nodes. So to travel to four is two minutes. That's why we have to get the max time. If not, it will take like one. So the mean time is the highest number in the table. And we're done. So submit. And here. Easy. Alright. Thanks for watching the video.